the wind beneath my wings Sweet Jesus, you're my melody and harmony Sweet Jesus, you're the eyes that I see through Sweet Jesus, yes I'm dancing to your tune for what's the difference for what a soul My soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes My heart beats for you As the difference for what a soul My soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes My heart beats for you Something more than gold I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I've got is Jesus I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold More than gold Gold, more than gold I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold More than gold, more than gold I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold 
God. Peace and many blessings and good evening to you all listening to me from your homes. Tonight, God has given us another opportunity to share his word. I, first of all, I want to thank Reverend Dennis for giving me this platform to share the word of God with you. I also want to thank the church leadership. Amen. Tonight, we want to teach on how to overcome our fears. And I want us to just say a word of prayer before we start our teaching. So shall we pray? Our Lord and our God, we want to thank you for tonight. Thank you that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Lord God, your word admonishes us not to fear. Even a man who is able to kill the flesh and after that is not able to do anything to the spirit. But rather we should fear you who is able to kill the spirit and then put that man into hell. But Lord, the reality is that all of us, human as we are, there are times that we are confronted with all kinds of issues which makes us afraid. Father, tonight we pray that even as we come to sit at your feet and to receive instructions, that, Lord, we will know how to overcome our fears. And we pray that, Lord, if there is any man, any woman, any brother, any young lady, any young boy listening to me right now who is under any kind of bondage of fear, I pray that, Lord, after the service tonight, that person shall receive it his or her deliverance in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So, quickly, when we, want to, when we talk about fear, the Bible dictionary defines fear as a feeling of reverence, awe, and respect, or an unpleasant emotion caused by a sense of danger. And I believe that it is the second part that we would like to look at tonight. An unpleasant emotion caused by a sense of danger. Fear can be directed toward God or humankind. It can be healthy or harmful. In Matthew chapter 10, verse number 28, Jesus made a profound statement. And I want us to look at that scripture. He said, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Again, when we look at scripture in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12, I would prefer to read it from the NLT. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12. The scripture says that don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. Who are the day? They're talking about the unbelievers, the people of the world. And don't live in dread of what frightens them. King James says that don't fear what they fear. Hallelujah. But the reality is that you and I, there are times that we are afraid. Hallelujah. We are afraid of diverse kinds of things. The fear of death. The fear of witches. The fear of demons. The fear of the unknown, the fear of the future. We are, we are afraid of different things when the word of God tells us not to fear. So the question is that if we are not able to, we need to know how to overcome this fear. Hallelujah. Because if we are not able to overcome this fear, it will rob us of our joy will never find joy. It will rob us of our peace. And then it will cause us to act in deceit. And that is what I think all of us will want to avoid. Hallelujah. You know, as I reflect and I think about this fear thing that I'm talking about, there is a story in the book of Genesis. Something that, you know, happened in the house of Isaac between his sons, Jacob and Esau, Rebekah, his wife, and Isaac himself, 
which created problems for the family, brought fear to the heart of Jacob. I want to use that story to illustrate what I want to talk about tonight. Hallelujah. So the summary of that story in Genesis chapter 27 is that so Isaac was old. He wanted to bless his firstborn son, Esau. He asked him to go and, you know, prepare something for him to eat. Then after that, he will bless him. Uh, you know, Rebecca had it. And then she has to condone and connive with his, uh, you know, with her son, you know, Jacob. They were first to prepare the meal, brought it to, you know, Isaac. He, you know, ate. And then they tricked him into blessing Jacob instead of Esau. Hallelujah. And Bible says that the beginning of the problem for Jacob started in uh, Genesis 27 from verse number 41. As we read, Bible says that and this thing made Esau so furious. It made Esau so furious that he wanted to take action. Bible says that from that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme. He said, I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So Esau was waiting for Isaac to die. And when Isaac dies, he will slew his brother Jacob. Bible says that and when, I don't know how, but the message got to Rebecca, Isaac's wife. And so when we continue from the verse uh, number 42, said, but Rebecca heard about Esau's plans. So she sent for Jacob and told him, listen, Esau is consoling himself by plotting to kill you. Hallelujah. So listen carefully, my son. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. Other version says that for a little while, just for a few days, and after he's cooled off, then I will bring you back. Hallelujah. But we will see when we read scripture that that was the last time Rebecca saw her son Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, I believe that tonight, I don't know what you know, is pursuing you. I don't know what your fears are. But I pray that God will grant you grace and the Lord, will live, the Lord is himself will even deliver you from your fears. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when we talk about this fear thing that I'm talking about, so Jacob's problems began. Jacob had to go to the uncle, Laban. He lived with Laban for 20 years. 20 years he lived with him. And I believe that Jacob did not forget that there was an outstanding issue at home that had to be resolved. Hallelujah. So for 20 years, I believe that any time the name Esau comes to mind, there is fear in the heart of Jacob. Tonight, I don't know what name, I don't know what it is, that when it comes to your mind, then you are afraid. I pray that, that tonight the Lord will deliver you. Hallelujah. I want to give us biblical you know, recommendations that will help us to overcome our fears. A few biblical recommendations, just about four of them. And I pray that God will help us. Hallelujah. Amen. The first one, we must stop pretending. Hallelujah. We must stop pretending. There are many of us our problem is that we pretend that the fear is not there. We pretend that the problem is not there. We live in denial. Hallelujah. And I pray that tonight, God will speak to your heart. Hallelujah. You know, Jacob was living in denial. So for 20 years, he pretended as if there wasn't any problem. I'd, I'm not sure he told, you know, the uncle that I have a problem back home. And I'm not sure that he told, you know, his wives that there's a problem back home. He did not. So he pretended all was well. 
Hallelujah. But the Bible says that the devil, Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 says that he is the accuser of the brethren. And so once that thing is there, once Satan has that what, you know, uh, uh, tool, you know, weapon against you, he will use it against you. Hallelujah. Bible says that the prince of this world come, Jesus said, that but he has nothing in me. But as long as Satan can find something to hold on to, to accuse you, he will continue to torment you. Hallelujah. And you will live in fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we should stop pretending that the thing is not there. Hallelujah. Jacob was pretending. Hallelujah. And so for 20 years, he pretended. It doesn't matter how long it takes. We cannot sweep that thing under the carpet. Hallelujah. That fear, if we are not able to deal with it and overcome it, it will still be there. Hallelujah. And it will still haunt you. But I pray that tonight the Lord will give you grace and help you and show you the way to overcome this fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Jacob having spent time with Laban for 20 years, he was having fun, enjoying you know, himself. He made money, lots of money. Bible says in Genesis chapter 32 from verse 3, that one time, he, you know, overheard the sons of Laban discussing among themselves that Jacob has stolen their father's flock and has become rich. This made him afraid. Hallelujah. Then God asked him to go back home. Hallelujah. God asked him to go back home. So it was time for him to go back home. But remember, the problem back home is still there. Hallelujah. And that problem has to be dealt with. Hallelujah. That problem has to be dealt with. So it was time to go home. Amen. And I pray tonight that if there's someone under the sound of my voice and there's something that you dread, there's a place that you fear to go because of something because of someone, because of something that you did, because of something that you were accused of, may the Lord grant you grace and the courage and the boldness to go back. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, we need to acknowledge our weaknesses. Hallelujah. So that God's strength will be made perfect. Hallelujah. You need to acknowledge your weakness. When we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse number 8 down, and I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. It said, three times I begged the Lord to take it away. But each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness. So that the power of Christ can work through me. Hallelujah. And so Jacob, as now, he now has embarked upon the journey. He has begun the, you know, the journey to go back home. But the fear of Esau was tormenting his mind. Hallelujah. It was tormenting his mind. And he knew that he doesn't have the strength to confront his brother or to meet his brother. Hallelujah. And so there must be a way. For him to be able to meet with his brother Esau. Now look at Genesis chapter 31. I want to read from verse number 6 down. And I pray that as we read these scriptures. And as you put them down. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And will lead you into this truth. And help you to understand it better. Even when you are on your own. Hallelujah. It says that you know how hard I have worked for your father. Go on. But he has cheated me changing my wages ten times. But God has not allowed him to do me any harm. So that was Jacob speaking to his wives. For if he said, the speckled will be your wages, the whole flock began to produce speckled young ones. Go on, please. In this way, God has taken your father's animals and given them to me. One time during the mating season, I had a dream. Can you please keep to maybe verse 11 for me? And then in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, and I replied, yes, here I am. Go on, please. Now look up, and then you'll see that the only uh, strict speckled and 
Spotted males are mating with the females of the flock. Please go on. Hallelujah. Verse 20. 20. Okay. So Jacob outwitted Laban, the Aramia, for they set out secretly and never told Laban they were living. So he left when the uncle was not even away. He fled with the women. Hallelujah. And so Laban pursued him. Hallelujah. Laban pursued him. But I believe that it got to a point. Now Jacob realized. Now he has come to a place that he needed to now meet with his brother Esau. Hallelujah. A place that he now needed to meet with his brother Esau. Please go down, go down for me. So uh, the wife was accused of stealing you know, her father's gods and all that. But, but, you know, finally, you know, he let them go. When you scroll down, you realize that he now released them to go. I think it should be somewhere down there. He finally, you know, released them to let them go. And then, the Bible says that as they were on their way, as they were on their way, now, Jacob, the Bible says that he realized that the reality dawned you know, on him that he's now going to meet with his brother Esau. And something must be done. 32. 32, yeah. Uh-huh. Bible says that, so because of the fear of his brother Esau, Jacob sent messengers ahead to meet his brother Esau, who was living in the region of Seir, in the land of Edom. You see what fear can do. Now, the man, though he has become a rich man, he had everything that he needed. But that fear, that issue, that has not been you know, resolved 20 years back, was still haunting him. Hallelujah. I don't know what fear has you know, haunted you for how many years, but tonight, God will bring deliverance to you. Hallelujah. Bible says that, he told them, give this message to my master Esau. So now, Jacob has become a slave of his brother Esau because of fear. He is calling him master. Other version says that he called him my lord. Hallelujah. He said, humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Until now, I have been living with Uncle Laban. And now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks of sheep, and goats and many servants, both men and women. I have sent these messengers to inform my Lord of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to me. Hallelujah. Hoping that you will be friendly to me. Bible says that Jacob was still talking. Says, After delivering the message, the messengers returned to Jacob and reported, we met your brother Esau and he is already on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. Wow. So there were 400 men coming with Esau. Already Jacob was afraid to meet with his brother Esau. And then hearing that Esau was coming with 400 men, then it means that I'm dead. Hallelujah. Something must be done. Hallelujah. Jacob was terrified at the news. He divided his household along with the flocks and heads and camels into two groups. He thought, if Esau meets one group and attacks it, perhaps the other group can escape. He's thinking of a way of escape. But this is where I want us to look at. Then Jacob prayed, O oh God of my grandfather Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, O oh Lord, you told me return to your own land and to your relatives. And you promised me I will treat you kindly. I'm not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owed nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. Oh Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother. Esau, I am afraid that he is coming to attack me along with my wives and my children. So now, Jacob acknowledged his weakness. He says, the Lord, I am afraid. And I believe that you listen to me, wherever you are listening to me from, I want to encourage you tonight. We need to acknowledge our weakness. Just tell God, God, I am afraid. This is the situation. 
I can't face it. Hallelujah. I'm afraid. I need help. Jacob said, I'm afraid of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he will kill me. Hallelujah. And perhaps he may not even kill me alone, but he will kill me together with the women and the children. So Lord, I need you to intervene. Hallelujah. And so if someone shall call upon the name of the Lord tonight, God shall bring deliverance to that person. Hallelujah. God shall bring deliverance to you if you will confess to God and tell God, the Lord, I am afraid and I need help. God will stretch forth his hand and God will deliver you. Hallelujah. Bible says that he called him, Lord, you are my Lord, you are my master, I am your servant. In just two chapters of this Bible, 32 and 33, he called him Lord almost 10 times because of fear. And I pray that fear will never make you a slave or a servant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the third point, after acknowledging your weakness, you must open up to God. Hallelujah. Open up to God. And when you open up to God, he will transform you. Hallelujah. God will transform you. Hallelujah. Bible says that in, in, in the, uh, chapter 32 from verse 22 of that same Genesis, chapter 32 from verse 22, during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servants, wives, and his 11 sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he set, sent, uh, sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And I pray that tonight, somebody under the sound of my voice, who is afraid, hallelujah, who is not, who is not what, no, able to what, no, overcome his fears, you know, her fears, will be alone, hallelujah. You need to be alone with God, hallelujah. Alone with God. Get out of the crowd. Get out of the crowd. Leave the multitudes. Go into your closet alone with God and open up to God. Hallelujah. Jacob was alone and he opened up to God. Hallelujah. He opened up to God. Bible says that this left Jacob all alone in the camp and the man came and rested with him until the dawn began to break. Go on. When the man saw that he could not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its sockets. Then the man said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me, unless you bring deliverance, unless you take away my fears, hallelujah, unless you give me grace to embark upon the journey that lies ahead. Otherwise, I wouldn't let you go, hallelujah. Somebody must hold on to God and tell God tonight, Unless you bring what? Deliverance. Deliverance. I will never let you go. Hallelujah. The man said, let me go. He said, no, I will not let you go. Unless you bless me. He asked him, what is your name? Tonight. God wants you to open up. Hallelujah. He wants you to tell him what the problem is. What the situation is. He said, what is your name? What is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. Jacob means what? A deceiver. A supplanter. Hallelujah. Maybe that thing. That is making you afraid. You may have done something, contributed to that thing. And that's the reason why you have become a slave to that thing. Hallelujah. God is asking you that, what is it that is making you afraid? Hallelujah. What is the problem? What is the situation? You need to open up to God and confess and talk to God about it. Hallelujah. He said, what is your name? What is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on, you will be called Israel. His name was changed. Hallelujah. He said, you, because, Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Tonight, may you win. Hallelujah. Tonight, may you be victorious in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 12. Romans chapter 10 from verse 12. Bible says that Jews and Gentiles are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. So if Jacob called upon the name of the Lord and his name was changed, he was delivered. When you call upon the name of the Lord, God will come through for you. Hallelujah. God will change your name. Hallelujah. God will transform your life. He will change your situation. It says that for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I pray that tonight may you receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. 
Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jacob was saved. Hallelujah. You see, now we need to look at you know, the sequence. Number one, we must stop pretending. Number two, we need to acknowledge our weakness for God's strength to be made perfect. Number, four, no, uh, number three, we need to open up to God. He will transform our lives. He will change our names. Hallelujah. And then, when God has transformed your life and he has changed your name, then the next thing for you to do, child of God, is to confront your fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are certain fears that, my brother, we cannot continue to hide from. We cannot continue to pretend they are not there. We will have to confront them. Hallelujah. We'll have to confront them. So you have to confront your fears. Hallelujah. Jacob has prayed. He has opened up to God. He has confessed. God has changed his name. Hallelujah. God has told him that now your name is what? Israel, because you have prevailed. Now, Jacob was now ready to confront Esau. Hallelujah. So when we read Genesis chapter 33 from verse 1, Bible says that then Jacob looked up and I pray that tonight somebody will look up. Hallelujah. Somebody will look up tonight. Hallelujah. Bible says that from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? The hills. So look up. Look up to God. Hallelujah. Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. Hallelujah. So he divided the children among Leah. Though he has now met God, God has delivered him, still that fear is still there. Hallelujah. But now he is ready to confront Esau. Hallelujah. Bible says that, and so he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and his two seven wives. Go on. He put the seven wives and their children at the front. Leah and their children next. And Rachel and Joseph last. Then Jacob went on ahead. As he approached his brother, he bowed to the ground seven times before him. Hallelujah. May you never bow to your fears. May you never bow to that thing that gives you sleepless nights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was it that then Esau ran to meet him? You see, he was afraid of Esau. But the Bible says that Esau ran to meet him. And you see, when we talk about fear, it's an acronym. Hallelujah. Fear, the F stands for false. The E stands for evidence. The A stands for appearing and the R stands for real. So it's a false evidence appearing real. Jacob was afraid that Esau was coming to slay him. But rather what happens, Jacob, uh, you know, Esau comes to embrace him and to kiss him. I pray that tonight, may that thing that you fear, may that thing never be real. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bible says that and Esau ran to meet him and embraced him. And threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they both wept. I pray tonight that may that thing that makes you afraid bow to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May that thing bow to you. And may you find rest. Hallelujah. What happened is that God himself has taken care of Esau. Hallelujah. God has taken care of Esau. Hallelujah. So God says that cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Hallelujah. After Jacob has casted the fear, the cares upon God, it was God now who took care of Esau. And I pray that tonight somebody out there, you cast your fears unto God. And God will take care of that problem. Hallelujah. You see, you are too weak. You are too weak. To be able to overcome that problem all by yourself. And that's the reason why you need to surrender to God. That's the reason why you need to cast that fear unto God. Some of us, when God says that, cast that fear, cast that burden unto me. You say, Lord, that's one, let me carry. Hallelujah. You want to carry it all by yourself. But God says that it's time that you let go. And allow me to take off the burden so that you will have freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a good ending 
to a very bad story. Hallelujah. But you see, what was, what was intended to be a few days that Jacob was going to spend with his uncle Laban turned out to be 20 years. Hallelujah. And he never met his mother, Rebecca, anymore. Hallelujah. And I pray that may that never be your story in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I want us to go into a time of prayer. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are going through all kinds of bondages. They are carrying burdens. Hallelujah. Their hearts is afraid. Their hearts are afraid. There is something that makes you afraid that you cannot sleep. You have sleepless nights. There is something that wouldn't allow you to have the peace of God. There is something that is still in your joy. There is something that has caused you to live in deceit. Hallelujah. Because you keep on telling lies to cover up. Bible says that he who covers his sins shall not prosper. But he who confesses them shall be blessed. Tonight, we want to pray. You want to just talk to God yourself. The first thing that we saw was that I said we should stop pretending. Tonight, you want to tell God. You want to tell God, God, Lord, this is the situation. This is the situation that I find myself in. I can't pretend the situation is not there. Lord, I come and lift up my hands unto you. And Lord, you want to say it as it is. It's between you and God. We are not there. It's between you and God. Talk to God and tell God. Lift up your voice and just begin to talk to God. God, this is the situation. This is the situation. I cannot pretend. I cannot continue to pretend any longer. Father, I can't pretend any longer. This is the problem. I am afraid. I'm afraid. I cannot help myself. I need you to intervene. Tell God, God, intervene on my behalf. Lift up your voice and talk to God. In the name of Jesus, tell God that, Lord, I am afraid. I cannot handle it. And I want you to handle it on my behalf. In the name of you. And God will help you out. Lift up your voice. Somebody talk to God right now. Talk to God right now. God is listening. Bible says that, ask and you shall receive. Ask, when, you, when you ask God to intervene, the Lord will come in and intervene. Lift up your voice. Somebody, you are praying. And telling God that, God, this is the reality. This is the reality. This is the reality. Number two, you want to acknowledge your weakness. Lift up your voice and say, the Lord, my strength is small. I cannot confront this situation by myself. I can't. Bible says that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you tell God, Lord, I'm weak. This is the problem. This is the situation. I have tried to you know, handle it by myself for all these years. I cannot. And I need help tonight. So tell God, God, I need help tonight. Lift up your hands. Surrender to him. God will help you out. He will help you out and he will deliver you in the name of Jesus. He will deliver you. God will deliver you tonight so that you will not become a slave. A slave of fear all the days of your life. Slave of death. Some of us, we keep hearing voices telling you that you will die. You are afraid. Tonight, tell God that, God, this is the situation. I keep hearing voices that I'm going to die. Tell God that this is the situation. Lord, I lift up my hands unto you. I am afraid. I'm afraid. I need help. I need to be delivered. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Acknowledge your weakness tonight. Tell God. God, I need help tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift up your, God, your, your voice and tell God, lift up your, your, your voice and spoke. Uh, and then pray, pray, pray. Pray somebody, talk to God. God will intervene. He will deliver you from that situation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray and talk to God. God, I need help. I need your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Now you want to tell God, God, Bible says that when Jacob opened up to God, God transformed him. God changed his name. You want to tell God, God, I need a transformation. That thing that made me fall into that situation, Lord, help me not to go back into that same sin anymore. Tell God, I need help. Deliver me from that situation that I will never go back into that situation anymore. Tell God, I need help in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray to God and tell God, I need your intervention tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, finally, we are going to pray. Bible says that now Esau, Jacob was ready now to confront Esau. He lifted up his eyes and he saw his brother coming with 400 men. God gave him the courage, the courage to move on and to meet his brother. He want to tell God tonight, God, I need courage. I need boldness to confront any situation, to confront the fears in my life. 
that has tormented me for all these years, things that I need to confront. Give me the courage and the boldness to confront them. Lift up your voice and pray. Tell God, I need to confront my situation. I need to confront that fear tonight. I need to confront that thing that is tormenting me, giving me sleepless nights. I need grace to confront it. Tell God, God will give you the grace. God will give you the grace. God will give you the grace. Now speak to God this, this, this evening. Tell God, give me grace, the courage, the boldness, the boldness in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that he has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power. The spirit of love and of a sound mind. That's what God has given unto you. It says that do not fear even the man who is able to kill even the body. And after that is not able to do anything. But if there is anyone to fear, you need to fear me, the Lord. Who is able to kill your body, kill your spirit and then put you into hell. Tell God tonight, give me the courage to confront that situation. You need to confront that situation somebody tonight. You need to confront that situation. Gather courage and the boldness and it comes from God. Tell God I need to be empowered. I need strength to confront that situation. Maybe if it's someone you need to go, what was the word? No, confront, you know, talk to. Pray to nurse somebody. Maybe it's a sin. I mean, you need to what? You know, confess. Maybe what? You know, an addiction. You need to confess. Tell God tonight, I need to confront that situation tonight. I need to confront that situation tonight so that I will be able to overcome that situation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray somebody, lift up your voice and pray. In the name of that, God will give you grace. God will help you out. God will intervene. God will intervene and God will help you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, O oh Lord, your people will stand before your presence, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray for my brethren, those under the sound of my voice. There are those, my God, who all their lives, you know, have lived, my God, under the fear, my God, and the bondage of death. My God, they keep hearing voices telling them that they were going to die. But tonight, Lord, I pray, Father, for such people. That, Lord, tonight, your word says that you have conquered death, my God. You have conquered death. And I pray tonight, my God, may they receive that grace, my God, to overcome the fear of death in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray, oh God, for everyone, every young man, every young woman, my God, who is suffering from addiction, my God, and that has created fear in his or her life. I pray tonight, oh God, that, Lord, they shall find deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, even for that spouse, Lord God, even that husband, even that wife who is going through torments, my God, I pray tonight, may they find deliverance in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, stretch forth your hands and let there be peace in the homes of your children. Lord, if there is anyone who is afraid, even, if, even God, even of the situation we find ourselves in right now, even the COVID, I pray, Lord, tonight, grant them the grace to overcome their fear of contracting even coronavirus. So I want to thank you tonight. We give you praise for all that you have done. Thank you for the deliverance, oh God. Thank you for the salvation, oh God. Thank you for transforming the lives of your children. We want to thank you tonight, oh God, for opening a new door, a door of freedom, liberty, and the peace of God to rule in the hearts of your children. We want to give you praise. We want to give you all the glory tonight in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen.
You hold my name. 